in us. We honor God for what he's done today. Thank God for all the blessings. And at this time, as our ushers come, let us act in accordance.
establishing this prayer hour and thank God for all the effectual fervent prayers of a righteous man and what it has availed and done down through the years and still today what it is accomplishing for us. Thank God. I'm going to honor God and those of you who are able, I'm going to ask that you be with me as we go before the throne of grace. Thank you, Jesus. Watch us, Heavenly Father. Cleanse us, God. Purify me. Thank you, Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord God, as we come this afternoon, it's with thanksgiving in our hearts, God, for all the wonderful and marvelous things that you've done. I want to tell you, thank you, God, that you've allowed the doors of this sanctuary, the doors of this ministry to still be open just a little while longer. And in that, God, you're still inviting men to come and compelling them to come on in before it's eternally too late. As we look out into the world, God, and as we look about the different situations, we don't know what tomorrow holds. But God, we don't even know when the trumpet will sound, but what we want to be have and know that whenever the trumpet sounds, we would have already gotten things right with you to be able to depart this world. And Father, we want to tell you thank you for a message of hope. When you're lost in yourself and woo, look like nothing's working, nothing's going right, but God, somehow, some way, you give hope to the hopeless. And I want to tell you thank you. Thank you for seeing us. And God, even when the things that we do, not willful sin, but when we cause ourselves to error because we see and think we know the way, you still come and you work with us to show us you don't know, trust me, and let me be the God of your life and not you. Father, we want to tell you thank you for giving us another opportunity to come before you concerning our prayer list and concerning God, just us. And we ask God that you look down from heaven and you bless the individuals whose names are written here on this prayer list. One day, God, you came and you blessed me because your word says, and those are in the world, you came into Okinawa, Japan, and you brought me out of a world of sin, and I want to tell you thank you. So, God, as you look down, those who need to come in, bring them on in. And, God, our children that are still out in sin, we ask in Jesus' name, don't let them become comfortable. Don't let them forget the truth that they heard, and don't let them settle for what the world has to offer. Do it for your honor and for your glory. And God, I know if you can roll through the bowels of Babylon and bring out that religious person, you certainly can bless our children to come back home. Do all these things for your honor and for your glory. In Jesus' name I pray and I thank you. Amen. Though the pressures of life seems to weigh you down and you don't know which way to turn, God is concerned. And he's working it out for you. The child that's on cocaine, through prayer he can change. And that marriage that's on the verge of breaking up although sometimes you have to walk alone oh, now you ask yourself mm, is there a word is there a word for the God is concerned 
and he's working it out for you. I know that he is. I know that he is. He sees you way in the midnight hour. He's working. Crying on your pillow. But he knows. And it's something how God can see you and give a call. You know, you are Lord. God cares. I'm so glad God cares. I'm a living witness that God cares. Yes, He does. And He's working it out. He's working it out for you. Lord, I know you care. When you your body. A prayer will go up over your life. Someone reached up and God came and touched their body. And it haven't been the same. God cares. I'm so glad God cares. I'm so glad how he loves us. to our academic scholars. Amen. Uh, we're coming from Ezekiel chapter 36. Ezekiel chapter 36, starting at verse 24. Ezekiel 36, starting at verse 24. Ezekiel 36, starting at verse 24. And it reads as, here's too many leads, Ezekiel 36 and verse 24. And it reads as follow. For I will take you from among the heathen and gather you out of all countries and will bring you into your own land. Verse 25. Then will I sprinkle clean water upon you and ye shall be clean from all your filthiness and from all your idols will I cleanse you. Verse 26, a new heart also will I give you, and a new spirit will I put within you. And I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh, and I will give you a heart of flesh. This is the wonderful part. Verse 27, and I will put my spirit within you, and cause you to walk in my statutes, and ye shall keep my judgments and do them. Amen. Thank God for the reading of his most precious and holy word. And thank God for the transforming miracle that salvation gives to a soul. Back in the hands of the choir.
in this walk we face many battles but they're not yours they belong to the Lord put on Word. Don't. It's too late. Don't. 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 So be encouraged, my mother. Hold on, my brother and sister. There's a way of escape for you and for me. Be strong.
for that victory song fight on because the Lord is on our side fight on he's already won the battle so it's only victory for us as we continue to allow him to lead and guide us as we fight honor God for being here today we thank God for each and every one that's present and I would like to recognize Wendell thank God for him coming thank God for him being here present today <laughs> Amen, amen, amen. And, and, and he was out with surgery. He's not going to explain and tell what kind of, but we just thank God that God allowed him to come back home and to be with us today. Amen. We thank God for him. Amen. Yes, sir. Praise God with you. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. Yes. Amen. 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 We certainly we're, we're grateful and thankful. Another miracle in the house. Amen. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. Someone was found faithful. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Amen, amen. Thank God. Yes. Yes. Yes, Lord. Praise God for each blessing, each miracle. He continues to bestow upon this ministry. Amen. Thank God for someone has been found faithful. Yes. Honor God for being here today. Thank God for what he continues to do. I'm going to ask those you are able at this time to stand as we go before the word of, before we go into the word of God and we go into a short word of prayer. Watch us, Heavenly Father. Father God, as we come before your throne this afternoon, God, we want to tell you thank you for what you've done for our brother. God, thank you for such a wonderful report, Lord and what you've been able to do in his life. And God, as we come, we want to come ask you to bless us and guide us and direct us as we go into your most precious and your holy word. Speak to our hearts, God, and enable us to see the things that we need to see. And God, I just want to tell you thank you for bringing hope to the hopeless. In Jesus' mighty name we pray and we thank you. Amen. Amen. Uh, turn your Bibles to Exodus chapter 15. Exodus 15 and verse 22. Exodus 15 and verse 22. Exodus 15 and verse 22. 
Exodus 15 and verse 22. Exodus 15 and 22. Kara. So Moses brought Israel from the Red Sea, and they went out into the wilderness of Shur, and they went three days in the wilderness and found no water. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Jesus. From that verse of scripture there, my subject today is the wilderness journey. The wilderness journey. I want to tell God thank you for those that he choose, such as Moses and others, to be his leaders, his representative, to bring about deliverance, yes. salvation. Yes. Thank you, Jesus, in others' lives. Yes. And it is not a position in which they chose for themselves. Yes. It's one of a divine appointment. Yes. And in so doing, it must be honored and respected. And in that, I can say, Father, forgive me. We don't know the danger we get in with God when we touch his anointed. His word is still the same. It never changes. It's solid as a rock. He says, I'm the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. When he chose Moses, he used him, a man who didn't think he was qualified because he is in speech impediment. God still told him, I chose you. Because he, why? He knew how his heart would be in following his instructions. He chose Moses and he allowed Moses to go before Pharaoh and do all these miracles that put down every idol God Egypt had to show to the Egyptians there's a God in heaven and he lives and he's alive forevermore. When Moses, after God brought them out of Egypt, the wilderness journey, it should have built and strengthened their faith. But the wilderness journey was where you had so much grumbling and complaining from the people because they forgot, thank you Jesus, that where they, what God had done for them was no ordinary thing. It's a blessing when God comes and he brings you out of Egypt. Egypt is whatever sin you're in. Egypt is however you were before coming into the truth. God had Moses to bring the children out of Israel, and they went here at the Red Sea. They were out into the wilderness of Shur, and they went three days in the wilderness and found no water. Listen, if God turned all the water in Egypt into blood, if he had the plague of flies only to affect the Egyptians, if he had the frogs only to affect the Egyptians and never affected his people, don't you know? He can give you water in a dry land. That's right. But when you're full of ingratitude, you will complain and your complaining be ugly. And it's a spirit God does not like. Amen? Verse two, uh, 23 for me, 22 and 23. And when they came to Marah, they could not drink of the waters of Marah, for they were bitter. Therefore, the name of it was called Marah. Bitter waters. They couldn't drink the water because the water, if you will, would po was poisonous. And what, verse 24? And the people murmured against Moses, saying, What shall we drink? This murmuring is a signal, and it was a signal, uh, it signals a hostile question and is used mostly to describe Israel's rebellious complaining. But I can't look at Israel and don't see me. Amen? Thank you, Jesus. What it was, what is it that I have grumbled about? The wilderness journey should have been a time of excitement, a time of knowing that we're no longer under the taskmaster's whip on our backs. We don't have to suffer injustice. We're being led of the God of the Bible, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and he's taken us to the promised land, and he's put before us 
a leader that does not, does not mistreat us as we were used to being mistreated, but he loves us unconditionally, and he wants the best for us and wants us all to make it into the promised land. And the people murmured against Moses, saying, what shall we drink? What did Moses do? And he cried unto the Lord, and the Lord showed him a tree, which when he had cast into the waters, the waters were made sweet. There he made for them a statue and an ordinance, and there he proved them. Amen. There he proved them. He wanted to test them. This was God. And when Moses cried unto the Lord, and the Lord showed him a tree, just think, when we came out of Egypt, somebody showed us a cross that was made out of a tree. Somebody showed us that a Savior died on that cross to take the bitterness out of our lives, to take the sin away from us, to take away all the doubt, all the pain, all the agony, all the misery that we had went through. The wilderness journey should have produced a grateful bunch of folks because a tree took the bitterness of sin out of their lives. But when you are a complainer, you don't care what God has done or how blessed you are, you're full of complaints. When you are a complainer, it's selfishness involved because why? It's all about you and it's not about God. The, and the, suff and the, the, the complaining comes oftentimes because there are roots of unbelief that lies in the life of an individual. The roots of unbelief lie in loving the wrong things. You think about it. When you love the wrong things, wouldn't you full of complaints? When you had your eye focused on what you wanted, wouldn't you full of complaints? But I want to tell God, thank you. The wilderness journey, someone sent by God, enabled me to come out of Egypt and come to a land, come to a place where I can go to the promised land. Saints, we are on our way to the promised land. And he cried unto the Lord, and the Lord showed him a tree, which when he had cast into the waters, the waters was made sweet. There he made for them a statue and an ordinance, and there he proved them. This is what God set up for them. Verse 26. It, if thou wilt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, mm -hmm. and will do that which is right in his sight, and will give ear to his commandments, and keep all his statutes. I will put none of these diseases upon thee, which I have brought upon the Egyptians, for I am the Lord that healeth thee. Amen, amen, amen. Didn't God give us a promise? Amen. I will lead you, I will guide you, I will direct you, I will love you. Didn't he give us a promise when he came out? But we had to, we had, if thou will diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God. Now, I can say, thank you, Jesus, not being in willful sin, but the times when I thought I knew I can say, look what mess I got myself into. Amen? By choosing to not to, 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 deal it, to hearken to the voice of the Lord God. Now, for me, my wilderness journey, when God began to bring me out of Egypt, came on that car, car ride, riding down Oglethorpe Boulevard. I thought, thank you, Jesus, I was on my way to a promised land. But I found out that I was not. I found out I was a sinner, lost, and need of a savior. That, when I heard, listen, that should have caused me then to know, don't trust yourself. When you trust yourself, you'll find yourself making a fool of yourself because you're looking to yourself instead of looking to the true and the living God to give you what is needed for your deliverance and for your journey. The wilderness journey brought out of the people murmurings and complaints. It was always about their selfish desires. Yes, they needed water and food. God was fully aware. But the attitude behind your grumbling and complaining is what got you in trouble. As God fulfilled and provided for, for them, their faith, F-A-I-T-H, their faith, to trust and believe God never came about out of all that they experienced. Hmm? What have we experienced? What have I seen? What have I seen done? How have I seen relief come to someone's soul? How have I seen someone brought out and, and God quieted their thoughts so they could hear his voice? 
How has God spoken through his word and lives have been changed? How has God spoken to where one person might have been headed in this direction, but God caused them to stop? And when they stopped and heard God, they were able to turn around in that wilderness. It should have strengthened their faith to believe God further and to do more and greater things. But when you're full of grumbling and complaining, the only thing you strengthen is the wrong thing in you. But I want to tell God, thank you for the wilderness journey. The wilderness journey, it not only brings out the mess that be in man, but it makes the job of God's chosen leaders difficult. It wasn't the physical endurance of marching and walking that, that caused Moses to error. It was the complaining from the people on a daily basis, coming at him, challenging him, putting him down, talking to him in an ugly way, and even challenging his authority as God's chosen leader. Thank you, Jesus. It's a wonder. When you look back sometimes, you say, I'm still alive. Yeah. It's a wonder that God hadn't struck more people down but because grace and mercy reigns, I'm still alive. But in that, I can say, God, forgive me. God, forgive us and help us to get what we need before it's eternally too late. I want to tell God, thank you. The wilderness journey is supposed to have us to see and to realize and to know that the God of heaven, he lives, he reigns, he's in control, he's in charge, he's alive and he lives forevermore. And I want to tell him, thank you. His word still says, touch not mine anointed and do my prophet no harm. We get ourselves into trouble when we run this little thing in our mouth, thinking we're big and bad. We get ourselves in trouble when we think, I got it, I can handle it, I know better than God, and I can do this or I can do that. Turn now to Numbers chapter 11. Numbers 11. Numbers 11, Moses lived to the age of 120. And at that age, God took him aside before he showed him the promised land and didn't able and allow him to enter the promised land. The word of God tells us that his, his, his eyes were not dim, nor his strength abated. That meant that when he died, God was finished with him at that time for the task and the leadership that he had him for and he did not die of natural causes. He died because God knew it was his time to go on home, and God took him home, and it was a funeral that was just between God and him. But I want to tell God thank you for those that stand as God's representative in front of the people. They endure a lot because of the attitude of the hearts of individuals that are not right with God, and God is not pleased when it happens that way. This is a uh, Numbers 11, and we're going to start reading at verse 1. And when the people complained, it displeased the Lord. And the Lord heard it, and his anger was kindled. And the fire of the Lord burnt among them and consumed them that were in the uttermost parts of the camp. This time when they complained, God got involved. And God showed he did not, was not pleased with what and how they were. And a fire of the Lord began to burn on the uttermost parts of the camp. Verse 2. And the people cried unto Moses. And when Moses prayed unto the Lord, the fire was quenched. Have you gotten yourself in trouble from running your mouth? Have you gotten yourself into a position that you wish you hadn't gotten yourself into? And the very person that you did not, that, that you alienated yourself with, is the one that you needed to come and get you out of that position and that place that you've gotten yourself into. I want to tell God, thank you that his people don't hold no grudges. Because if Moses would have held grudges, the people would have had no hope. If the Moses would have held grudges, the people, all of those that came out of Egypt would have died out there in that camp. And the people cried unto Moses, and when Moses prayed unto the Lord, the fire was quenched. Uh-huh, verse three. And he called the name of the place Tabera, because the fire of the Lord burnt among them. Mm-hmm, go ahead. And the mixed multitude that was among them fell a lusting. And the children of Israel also wept again and hold, said. Hold it, hold it for me again. 
And it said, and when the mixed multitude and the mixed multitude that was among them fell a lusting, and the children of Israel also wept again, meaning they joined that, at that mixed multitude in their complaining. Now, no one makes you do what you do. You do what you do because of what's in your heart. Amen? Amen. I want to tell God, thank you. What's in you, you bring that out. Nobody makes you, cause you to defile yourself before God. So when the mixed multitude got to complaining, and they got to com and griping and complaining about what, they, what we're going to see here in verse 5, the children of Israel did not need to join that. If they were really, and if they really had thankfulness in their hearts as they should, they could have said, hush, God's been good to us. Be quiet because we should have died in Egypt. Egypt was a place that was not going to let them come out. Where I was in the bowels of Babylon was a place in which I could not come out. And if God hadn't had a divine leader, I still would have been stuck in the bowels of Babylon. Babylon is none other than this religious world. But the wilderness journey shows a man's ungrateful heart to the divine acts that God does to save his wretched soul. The wilderness journey causes a person in their evilness and their evil heart to challenge God's leader and say, you take too much upon yourself. But guess what? That's who God chose. So they didn't take it, God gave it, amen? And he was with them all the way. And the mixed multitude that was among them fell a lusting, and the children of Israel also wept again and said, what? Who shall give us flesh to eat? You start, you're thinking about your belly. What about your soul? What did they say, verse five? We remember the fish which, did, which we did eat in Egypt freely, the cucumbers and the melons and the leeks, and the onions and the garlic. Mm -hmm. But now our soul is dried away. There is nothing at all beside this manna before our eyes. You see, they see what they, they remembered what they used to have. And they put down what they currently had. And in putting it down, they were putting down God. They said this manna, with the manner that they were receiving now, wasn't as a result of being enslaved and in sin. It came freely from God, and it was bread from heaven. Have you been dissatisfied? Have you looked the other way, trying to put your head outside the fence, and knowing everything you need has already been given and supplied by God? It is sad. And I wrote this here, and I was thinking on myself when I, somewhat, when I wrote, a proud man stands on that which he has accomplished and wants no one to challenge him about it. But it's a blessing when God can challenge you to let you know you stand in opposition against me. I tell God thank you for his wilderness journey was to come and to set the souls of men free. The individuals in the, in, that was here with Moses, the reason why they didn't make it into the promised land is the reason why men today don't make it into heaven. They did not make it because of unbelief. You must believe that God lives and that he's alive and that he saves souls. When you have that spirit of unbelief, you will become a troublemaker in the best of places because you make it all about yourself. They said, but our soul is dried away. There is nothing at all besides this manner before our eyes. They, if that was their main complaint and, and, that, and they complained that way, they missed the fact that Jehovah was standing by with salvation ready to give to them. It's sad to miss your opportunity to heaven because you're so busy, full of complaints and complaining about what you lack and don't have. Amen? It's a sad thing when you cause yourself to miss your, your entry into God's heaven. The wilderness journey only brings out what's in you. The wilderness journey only is designed to show you what's in you. If it's not according to God, it's going to work against you. And if you let God get that mess out of you, you can give your life to Christ 
and you can become a newborn child of God. I want to tell God, thank you, that he came into Egypt, my Egypt. I know I could have never gotten out. My Egypt had me locked down. I was satisfied where I was, and I thought I was right. But I'm so glad God challenged me to know different. And I'm so glad he had a Moses waiting on me to tell me this is the way to heaven. And God is still standing by today, and he's saying the same thing. If the Lord has been able to speak to your heart, he's shown to you that you have roots of unbelief in yourself, loving the wrong thing. God made us to love, but he's made us to love him and to love others. If you're not loving as God say love, and if you have roots in you of unbelief, he is saying, if you see yourself that lost sinner, and you believe that I'm speaking to your heart, if you come to me by faith, this is the only thing I'm going to get you into heaven. Through grace, I will save your soul and write your name in the Lamb's Book of Life. Has God been able to speak to you today? If he has, we're going to ask you to stand, and we invite you to come. So let God do for you what you can't do for yourself. Let him save your soul. <laughs> God, thank you for what he has done. Grateful and thankful for salvation. We're looking to the Lord to continue to bless us and keep us. And as our brothers come, let us act in accordance. Of the pain, 
Oh my sorrow A little crying out is all right. After a while, you won't have to cry no more. Don't you worry. No, 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 no. He's going to wipe every, 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 every tear away. And Away. 
We ain't got a way. A way with nothing. God sees everything. He knows about it all. He has a record. Man can't touch. Man has nothing to do with it. He's going to write. God knows your name. All the many prayer hours. All the many phone calls. All the many prayers. Oh, oh.